Hey, I'm Lewis Spears, and welcome to my new web series called The Right Perspective. I am a lifelong educator. I've taught for about 14 years. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm an executive director of an after school program, Kismet of Kings, and I'm also an author of an Amazon number one bestseller, You Are the Answer to the Problem from the Hood to Harvard and Back Again. In this web series, we're focusing primarily on how to deal with children. And if you aren't a parent, then how to deal with a spouse. And if you are married, I want to help you with your extended family. I, I, you know, just their whole person, your mind, your body, and your soul. Right? This is an uncertain time for all of us. And what I want to do is serve as a, a source of information and inspiration to get us through these trying times, you know, these, this pandemic. So while you're scrolling through social media, um, I just want to give you a different perspective. You know, I, I will argue the right perspective when it comes to healthy living. Thank you for tuning in and let me know what you think. So the first topic that I would like to speak to you about is how do you deal with children during this pandemic? I felt it only natural to speak about children first because I am an educator and I'm also a parent who has a toddler and an eight week old in my house right now. So parents, I definitely understand what you're going through. We're gonna get through this together. One thing that I'm intentional about is creating an environment of safety and of love. There's a bunch of information that our children are getting, whether it's from online, whether it's from the television, whether it's from the adult conversations in their lives, right? And so we wanna make sure that we are driving the conversation in many ways. Right, so whenever I'm having a conversation with AJ, I'm talking primarily about hope, right? That, yeah, this is what it looks like. This is what mommy and daddy are doing. We're home, but we know that it's going to get better, right? And so for a young person, you might have that type of a conversation, but for an older person, um, let's say who is the age of my young men, the Kismet of Kings, who um, are in high school, um, I, I will have a straight up conversation. Hey, what's going on, man? Um, what are you feeling? What are your thoughts around this? And then have an opportunity to debunk any of those, the, the misconceptions about this whole time. Um, remember, um, don't leave it by chance. Don't let a day go without you speaking about it because they're inundated with information all day, every day. And we wanna make sure that we are drivers of that information. So the second piece is set a routine, right? I've seen crazy, crazy uh, Facebook posts or social, uh, Instagram posts about like, you know, Johnny wakes up at eight o'clock and he's gonna eat from eight to 8.30. From 8.30 to nine, he's gonna read. And from 9.30 to 12, he's gonna play. Um, I don't subscribe by that. Um, I am task oriented for the older kids and time interval oriented for the younger kids. What do I mean, right? Um, with the older children, I'm gonna make sure that, hey, if you uh, clean your room, right, then you can play your game. Or if you do your homework, then you can eat. Well, maybe that, one, maybe that wasn't the right uh, correlation, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? If you do your homework, then you can go outside onto the porch and you know listen to your music. Um, make sure that it's task oriented um, when, when you're actually assigning um, things for them to do. For the younger generation, like my my uh, toddler, who, who is all over the place, I'm very conscious about uh, giving him time interval uh, tasks. What do I mean by that? All right, AJ, we're gonna clean your room 
in three minutes. Here's a timer, get to work, right? Because ultimately with this, <laughs> with this three year old, it's oftentimes easier for me to get him to build a rocket than to actually uh, clean his room. So, you know, I'm, I'm very clear about the intervals, right? Um, we're gonna eat in 15 minutes. I'm put 15 minutes on the clock and this is your expectation while you're sitting there. So that's how I deal with the older uh, children versus the younger children. The third thing is to engage in a daily activity with your children. At the end of the day, many people have said that we have never dealt with something like this before. And it's true. And to be told, we probably won't ever want to go do something like this. But while we have the time, this is precious time, right? You can use this time to build a solid relationship with your children. You know, as it, growing up, I don't remember like the latest sneakers I got or, you know, the, the, the phone. I mean, we didn't get the, we don't have iPhones or anything. We didn't have iPhones or anything like that. But I remember watching Home Alone for about 30 times, right? I remember when it snowed one time, we walked to Booger T Projects where we grew up. Woo -woo. Uh, I remember walking there and like playing in the snow with my mother, my stepdad, and my siblings, right? So those are the memories that I re that that I hold dear to my heart and that I cherish. My hope um, is during this time that you will create those memories with your children, right? Take them to the park with my son. Um, we walk around the block. We cook together. We read together. We exercise together. We do just different activities that will that I would do anyway, but I would, I incorporate him into the mix so that we can build these uh, bonding experiences. I'm telling you, if you invest in your children right now in these specific ways, it's going to yield great returns in the future. So before we end this particular episode, I would like to leave you with resources that are really, really helpful for your youngsters. For my son, I use Endless Alphabet, which is um, a, an app that focuses a lot on development um, with the sounds and the letter recognition um, and the blending of letters in the alphabet. The other one is Hops to Coding Safari for Kids, and basically, um, this is the 21st century um, ways of coding for younger kids though. And it's very important that our young people start to uh, code and learn the ideas of coding. So for the high schoolers, for the middle school high schoolers, I would encourage Khan Academy um, because it's a great resource. I started using it, but it, I would always stop because of subscription uh, purposes. But now subscription is free. It's free. So you're uh, allowed to use it. And at your leisure, it's a great resource. Um, and it essentially helps you to learn things on your own and at your own pace. So those are the three resources that I would like parents to use. One, um, Endless Alphabets. Two, Hopster Coding Safari for Kids. And three, Khan Academy, and those are all age-appropriate apps. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening to the first episode of my web series. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, but if you enjoyed it, right, or if you were inspired, I hope that this has added quality to your life especially during these uncertain times, right? Our young people are looking to us. Our young people are, are using us as, as a goalpost to figure out what they are gonna do. And if we're together, right? If we're doing things that are uh, healthy for ourselves and our lifestyle, they will follow suit. So thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you enjoyed it. And please leave a comment at the bottom so that we can engage. Um, have a good one. Deuces. This ain't what you want, nah. dude. Nah. Hope you can relate to what I'm going through. Uh, ain't too many things that nah. I won't do. 
cruising on Pulaski in my own view. Right. Uh, uh, say what you won't do. Hope you can relate to what I'm going through. Ain't too many things that I won't do. Cruising on Pulaski got my own view.